All right, well, on the bench today, we've got a Ruger M77 Mark II, 338 Win Mag. This is the all weather stainless and it has the DuPont Zytel stock. This uh, rifle was made in 1991, according to the serial number and Ruger. And the assignment this week was to research one of your uh, firearms and figure out what steel they used in the manufacture of it and what processes they used in uh, in forming that steel and then in heat treat and all that sort of stuff. And so I picked this one because, um, you know, Rugers have always been known for toughness, in particular this uh, all-weather, um, you know, for as old as it is, it's not super old, but it's in great shape. And it's been used, I've used it hunting in Alaska, and uh, I bought it used, so who knows what all it's seen. Um, but I ran into a couple of problems. Uh, I called Ruger customer service and they wouldn't tell me exactly what steel they use it's a proprietary you know trade secret right um it, look if i were in the business of manufacturing firearms and wanted to use the exact same steel that ruger is using i would just send a chunk of it to a lab and have them analyze it and tell me exactly what it was so i don't know what they're trying to hide but um, the most I could get is that it was a 400 series stainless and based off of everything else that I found online, again, all the references are down in the, uh, in the comments section as always. Uh, I'm very confident if I were a betting man, I would bet that this is 416 R stainless because that seems to be, uh, the hot ticket that everyone uses when it comes to durability and, uh, ease of machining. So 416R stainless, uh, chemical composition, um, it's very low carbon, it's like right around 0.1%. Uh, high chromium though, 12 to 14% in 416R. Uh, it's got a little manganese, some silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, molybdenum, and the rest is iron. But that sulfur that they add, and it's a tiny bit, it's a... Uh, uh, 0.15 to 0.35% in 416R. That's put in there to make this more machinable. It's easier to machine. And I, I would have to assume that it softens it up. Um, but it didn't. I couldn't find specifically how it makes it more easy to machine. The only thing that makes sense to me is that uh, it makes it softer than the cutting heads on the, on the machine uh, machining tools. All right, so stainless, as we know, is used for its corrosion resistance typically, and uh, a common misconception is that stainless won't rust. Look, it, as some people say, it stains less, right? Um, and that's true. You can get some corrosion. I have, uh, I take pretty good care of, of my rifles, but when I got this, there was a tiny bit, nothing on any of the polished outside parts, but if you can see inside uh, the casting of the receiver is a little rough. They left it a little rough on the inside and there were a couple little pits, not pits, I'm sorry, but just teeny little bit of surface rust that was in there when I got it. It came right off. Um, and you know, since then I keep it oiled and, and it hasn't been a problem. But don't think that just because you have a stainless uh, firearm that you can just leave it in your safe and ignore it. It, it will rust eventually on you. Uh, one of the reasons that it, it um, stainless is stainless or, or corrosion resistant is a, it's a process called passivation. Okay. And you can do this in high chromium stainless, anything over 11% alloy, which this is okay. When exposed to oxygen, this, uh, stainless steel will go through a, a process called passivation. Okay. It forms a protective barrier, essentially a layer over the top of this. Uh, steel that protects it from more oxygen. It is, I guess, technically a form of corrosion or oxidation, but it, it definitely protects what's underneath. All right. And it's also a self-healing layer. So if you get a scratch, uh, eventually that, that will heal over with that, uh, coating that protects it. 
Um, they speed up the process. I don't, again, Ruger won't tell me their, their magical recipe, but typically passivation can, some solution of citric acid um, can speed up the process. Or one thing that can happen is that during the machining process, some of the actual carbon steel from the tooling is, is embedded uh, just into the surface of the stainless, you know, as it's coming across or you're, you're lathing the barrel or you're, you're, you're milling this receiver. Um, if that's the case, then there's a process called electropolishing. Okay. And it, um, basically helps to remove any of that embedded steel from the machining process, right? That's, that's prone to collecting in there. Uh, so you don't get any of the little rust spots that that's a problem because if you're familiar with, uh, it's called galvanic corrosion or dissimilar metal corrosion. When you have two dissimilar metals, it doesn't matter what it is really. Um, and they're bonded together. They're, they're, they're tightly, you know, in, in even, you know, two different kinds of screws, right? A, a machine screw that is a ferrous metal screwed into a piece of stainless steel or aluminum or something like that. You're inviting corrosion in the form of dissimilar metal or galvanic corrosion. Basically, um, you know, just a quick explanation of that. You have, a, it acts as a cathode and an anode. So the, the less noble, oh man, I'm getting way, way further into this than we needed to. Let's do it. Whatever. Noble metals are more resistant to corrosion. Okay. The less noble metal is going to be more uh, prone to corrosion, right? So if you have two of them together and then you add um, water, dirt, something that acts like an electrolyte, right? That gets in there, it allows uh, current to pass. Static electricity will do this, okay? It doesn't take much. The, um, the noble metal, the more resistant, is going to act as a cathode, okay? And that, that will be protected, essentially. The less noble or the more, the more corrosive, uh, prone to corrosion part will be the anode, all right? And if you've been in, uh, you know, I remember this from the Navy or if you've ever been around uh, ocean-going ships and stuff like that, they have a cathodic protection system. There's a zinc anode, or a bunch of them usually, and they are fastened to the hull of the ship. And that actually protects the steel hull from rusting out. That's a sacrificial piece, uh, that anode, zinc in the, in the um, case of a, a ocean going ship. In this case, it would be the O2 or whatever tool steel, high carbon steel that is embedded into the stainless. That's the action that you're, you're seeing, okay? That's that dissimilar corrosion that happens. So watch out for that. Um, another thing I found out in researching with Ruger, uh, some people were giving them flack for using cast parts. You have to understand when, when it came out that they're using cast parts, they use a company called Pine Tree Casting, I believe. I, I don't know that Ogre, uh, Ruger owns them, but I think they just uh, work closely with them. They cast super high quality steel and castings and then from those castings these parts are machined out by ruger um they're high quality they're high quality uh material okay there's nothing there's nothing in my opinion that of ruger that and i've owned many of them um they are super strong well built high quality, high material, even, I, I don't own a Ruger American, but people I've talked to said that even for a budget rifle, they're, they're a high quality, uh, barrel steel. So, you know, Ruger has the reputation for using the good stuff. So for that reason, I am pretty confident this is 416 R. So for the sake of the assignment, I just pretended it was. And, uh, that's my little cursory rundown on 416 R stainless. All right. Thanks a lot. Thumbs up, shoot straight. Bye.